Hi everyone, Samantha Yoder, the Family Life Minister here at Mynear Christian Church. Happy Sunday. Uh, we are going to continue our readings through the Jesus Storybook Bible. And today we have two very special stories about David. So if you're following along in your Bibles, uh, we're starting on page 122. God's people had some scary enemies, but the Philistines were the scariest of them all. And now the Philistines had come to fight them. The Philistines had a secret weapon called Goliath. Goliath was a terrifying soldier and worst of all, a giant. A giant so strong and so tall and so scary that no one had ever been able to fight him and live to tell the tale. So there they were, the Philistines standing on the top of one hill, God's people standing on top of the other. Every day, Goliath came out and shouted, send your best soldier to fight me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. But if I win, you will be our slaves. No one spoke. No one moved. Chickens, Goliath bellowed. Your God can't save you. I'll rip your heads off and have you on toast. His beady, greedy eyes gla glared at them hungrily from under his horrible helmet, as if any minute he really might just gobble them all up. And his laugh was a terrible laugh. It boomed, echoing horribly around and around the dry valley. So there is God's people. There is Goliath, obviously much taller than either of them. Well, Goliath might just as well have been a green slimy monster with three heads because God's people froze with fear. Their eyes glazed over and they turned deathly pale they knew if someone didn't do something quick, if someone didn't save them. But God would do something. He would send someone to save them. Now you remember that David was the youngest son of Jesse. Well, his brothers were soldiers in the army. One day, when David brought his brothers their lunches, he saw Goliath. He saw how scared everyone was. Don't be afraid, David said. I'll fight him for you. You're only a little shepherd boy, the king said, and Goliath is a great soldier. How will you fight him? God will help me, David said. So the king gave David his royal armor to wear, but it was too heavy and too big, and David couldn't even walk. I won't need this, David said. Instead, David picked out five smooth stones from the stream. One, two, three, four, five. Took his slingshot and walked towards Goliath. Step by step by step. Goliath walked towards David. You, Goliath peered down at the small boy. I'm little, David shouted up to him, but God is great. Goliath laughed an even terrible laugh than usual. With just one swing of his giant sword, Goliath could finish the boy off. But David kept going. It isn't how strong you are or how many swords and spears you have that will save you. It is God who saves you. This is God's battle and God always wins his battles. David put a stone in his sling, swung it around and let it go. The little stone flew like a bullet through the air and struck Goliath right between the eyes. Goliath stopped laughing. He stumbled and staggered and crash, fell dead. When the Philistines saw Goliath was dead, they ran away. And when God saw them running away, they cheered. God had saved his people. David was a hero. Many years later, God would send his people another young hero to fight for them and to save them. But this hero would fight the greatest battle the world has ever known. We're going to keep going talking about David, the shepherd king. David was a shepherd, but when God looked at him, he saw a king. Sure enough, when David grew up, that's just what he became, and David was a great king. He had a heart like God's heart, full of love. Now that didn't mean he was perfect because he did some terrible things. He even murdered a man. No, David made a big mess of his life, but God can take even the biggest mess and make it work in his plan. I need a new heart, Lord, David prayed, because mine is full of sin. Make me clean inside. God heard David's prayer. He forgave David, and he made David a promise. 
I will make you great, David, and one day a king will be born into your family and he will heal the whole world. Did you know that David was a songwriter too? In fact, his songs were so good, they might have been the top 40 charts if they had been invented then. God, David's songs are like prayers. They are called Psalms, and this one is called the Song of the Shepherd. It's probably number one on the Psalm charts, and it goes like this. God is my shepherd, and I am his little lamb. He feeds me and guides me. He looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside my heart is very quiet, as quiet as lying still in soft green grass in a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid because my shepherd knows where I am. He is with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He is getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me, everything I've ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness, I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love will go too. God gave David that song to sing to his people so they would know that he loved them and would always look after them like the shepherd loves his sheep. And one day, God was going to do something that would inspire thousands upon thousands of new songs. God was going to show his people once and for all just how much he loved them. Another shepherd was coming, a greater shepherd. He would be called the Good Shepherd. And this shepherd was coming, was going to lead all of God's lambs back to the place where they had always belonged, close to God's heart. We are so grateful that God transformed David's life so that later on Jesus could be born as part of this family and save us all from our sins. So Let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray to God. God, we're so grateful for this time that we get to keep digging into your word and keep hearing these stories and just getting to know you and your heart more. We're thankful that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that we continue to be saved by you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a great Sunday and I will see you back here Wednesday night for our next reading.